Hey everyone, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. Let's just get right into it today because we are joined by the one, the only, Mr. Jason Cameron. Hello, hello, David. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I mean, I do you have 2019 vibes here. We are in a studio. It feels unreal. I love it. And it's a rainy day and you still made it here. I'd like to say you made it here on time. Punctuality is key in my life. Uh, I try and be on time maybe five minutes earlier. No one is ever on time for me, so <laughs> thank you for that. Absolutely. Did you have to leave your day job, like, to come here? Like, you're, you're, you know, I think people see, you know, they've watched you on Winter House. People don't realize you actually have a day job. Yeah, yeah, no, I have a few day jobs. Um, I mean, I'm part-time model, part-time with my nonprofit, and part-time working on other projects that are just really back-to-back-to-back. So if I'm not in one place, I'm in the other. And you just caught me on an off day, which was great. What do you do for your nonprofit? It's called Glam for Good, right? Yes, Glam for Good. I'm pretty much like director of operations where, you know, I'm in the warehouse. I'm organizing the gives. I'm getting ready for the gives to go out. And I'm taking in, you know, all the materials that we need to do the gives as well. And what is it, like, for people who don't know? Well, Glam for Good, we use fashion to empower communities, you know, people or families in social economic, you know, disparity or you know ACS women's shelters we go everywhere and wherever they need some you know clothing or I don't even know how to say like uh, household items we can take care of that wow yeah. I mean you're just a nice guy yeah <laughs> I get it from my mama. What can I say? I mean, I just, I think anyone that does anything for non right? I mean, like, that's, you don't have to do that. No, I mean, but everyone should a little bit, you know, and I think that brings a little more awareness to just being who you are. That's true. Now, you are from upstate New York originally. How did you, I mean, did you come to New York City to be a male model? Like, did you grow up and say, this is what I want to do with my life? It was something I had in the back of my mind. It was something my mom always kind of told me growing up, you're my little model. And I was like, oh, that's cute. But, you know, I went to school, did college. And then after I didn't want to do an office thing. So I moved in with my grandmother. You know, she lived in Detroit. So fast forward a year after that, she kicked me out. And she's like, you need to do something. And so I was like, well, let me give it a shot. And so I drove from Detroit to New York, you know, found an apartment. And the rest is history. That was 11, almost 12 years ago. I mean, well, listen, a lot of us grew up and our mothers tell us that, you know, <laughs> you look like a model. But in the real world, that doesn't cut it for everyone. Like, how did you, you just figured, you know, hey. I, yeah, you know, I kind of studied, you know, the Tyson Beckfords and, you know, the larger, bigger models. And I was like, you know what? And I just kind of just watched and studied and, you know, thought if I didn't give it a shot, I would be doing myself a disservice. You're like, if Tyson Beckford could do it? Well, he's, he used to live in Rochester as well for a little bit. See? Which, yeah, yeah. There's something in the water in Rochester. Watch out. Oh, my God. <laughs> so what is the life, you know, of a male model in New York City these days like? Uh, I mean, trying to get back to work. You know, I think everything with, you know, the offices and the spaces that we used to work in that were so, you know, pushed with fashion and ideas and people and collaborations are kind of, you know, slowly coming back. You know, the world is still opening up in a sense, but... The, the male model life is up and at it. You got to be ready for everything and at any time. So Now, listen, you know, I think I'm one of them. I mean, I've talked to a lot of models, but you do have a perception, you know, like good looking people. You walk down a runway, a, a runway, you get like a bunch of clothes. You meet a bunch of other really hot people. How hard could this be? But like, tell me, like, is it like really, is that a hard job or not? It can be a hard job. A lot of people don't or don't give it the credit it's due in the sense of like maintaining these relationships or even being able to maintain multiple personalities on a set. You know, people can drive you crazy at times. But at the same time, it's to, you know, to keep that into composure and keep your composure and making sure everything goes to get the product that they need. So, And do you really get a lot of free clothes like I've made up in my mind? Everything I have I'm wearing was given to me. Really? Unfortunately. Well, except for I my mean, T-shirt. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I would love free clothes. Yeah. No, I get a, a few. But, you know, you have to think about it. I've been doing this for like 10 years. So, plus, there's a lot of clothes out there. And it really is a lot of, like, people could burn bridges. Like, you know, like, don't use that one again. Like, he was late. This. I mean, oh, right? yeah. That's it's real easy. easy. You know, you get on a, the back side of a producer or, you know, someone that's a casting director. You, <laughs> you won't see any of their projects. <laughs> that's like the end of it. Uh-huh. Real quick, so, Swift. 
you're doing, you know, you're living your life, working for, you know, Glam for Good, you're modeling, everything is going great. How does that lead? How did you get involved with Winter House? Yeah, you know, that kind of came from left field. Didn't see it coming. Um, one of my good friends in the modeling industry, Julia, you know, Jules. Who was on the show. Who was on the first season was um, one of my besties. We used to cut it up at the clubs, you know, the rooftop parties. And she had said that maybe I'd be a good fit. And yeah, a few interviews later, there we were. And she, I mean, she was already involved. She she knew Paige. Yeah, so. yep. Her and Paige grew up together doing their little modeling limited to, you know, modeling gigs. It was really cute. I saw the photos. <laughs> did you watch reality TV before? A this? little bit. You but, did? Yeah, I've, I've watched a little bit more like Below Deck and um, some of the Housewives stuff, but some of the earlier stuff. You actually, I mean, listen, you're a straight man, so Below Deck makes sense, but Housewives? <laughs> Really? When I had to, and you know, with the you know friends or significant others, yeah, you know, I'll sit and watch the drama. Okay, so when you okay, so when you got involved, you know, when Julia's like, "Come on!" Like, did you have reservations? Were you like, "Let's do it"? Like, did you have any second thoughts? Oh, you know, as my grandmother said, "Try anything twice," you know, and so I was like, "Oh, this sounds fun. This could be interesting. This could be bad, but it sounds more interesting than you know harmful." So. So did you know what to expect, like having watched like some at Housewives, some Below Deck? No, and you know, some people were telling me, you know, you should watch, you know, the other seasons of, you know, Summer House and try and, you know, get a feel for, you know, who people are and Southern Charm. And I'm like, you know, I could do that. But like, let me just see who they are. Let me just learn to get to know these people on my own. And, you know, I watched an episode or two of Summer House, but I just kind of kept it, kept it clear headed going into these that's, experiences. I mean, I've sw- talked to housewives that even watched housewives, just they were fans, and they even said like the best advice they got from prior people was like, whatever you've seen, just throw it out and just really take whoever you're meeting at face value. Absolutely, absolutely. So you just you really know, and you didn't know. Did you ever meet like Paige or like did you know? No, uh, no, no, I had no idea who anyone was except for Jules going in there. I came in blind, wow. literally. And you didn't even know Andrea, like, from the business? Nope. I may have seen his face around, huh. but, you know, in these casting halls, and, you know, you see everyone at least once. <laughs> so you get there. Here you are. What, I mean, when filming started, when everything, like, did you know what to expect? I mean, it was just go I mean, and here you are. I'd done some acting um, as far as modeling, acting, and, you know, as far as being mic'd behind cameras, and, like, that was comfortable. But learning, you know, the pace at which we work and, you know, getting to know people's personalities and learning who knows who and who slept with who or who's angry at who, like, that took some time. And you have to observe and, like, see what's going on to see where – you know, you your place even fits <laughs> or where, who you are in this whole process. Totally. <laughs> did you feel like at a disadvantage? I mean, I guess there were four of you, but did you feel like at a dis? 